Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself again. My name is Lenka Michalcová. I am affiliated with uh, Aerospace Research and Test Establishment in Prague in the Czech Republic. And I would like to present to you uh, the work of mine and my colleague uh, Dr. Ruzek regarding fatigue test of an integrally stiffened panel, prediction and regular monitoring using acoustic emission. Uh, so, uh, at, the begin uh, at the beginning I will introduce uh, to the whole point of the test, then I will describe test uh, conditions, and then I will uh, present our results and state conclusion. Uh, so, uh, nowadays uh, aircrafts are designed and operated uh, according to damage tolerance philosophy, which uh, accept uh, manufacturing defects and uh, some kind of damages which uh, of course do not influence the safety of the aircraft uh, but uh, this approach is um, closely uh, tightened to uh, regular inspections uh, using uh, different and suitable non-destructive uh, methods uh, but in order to uh, increase aircraft safety and increase uh, aircraft availability and uh, of course decrease maintenance costs. Uh, structure health monitoring approach is under development for more than a decade. Uh, structure health monitoring approach uh, requires uh, permanently mounted sensors or embedded sensors in the structure uh, which uh, enable uh, real-time possible damage monitoring um, uh, one of uh, possible methods uh, of structure health monitoring is considered acoustic emission. Uh, acoustic emission, uh, the sources of acoustic emission uh, cause elastic wave propagation. These sources are uh, active images. Uh, these elastic waves in ultrasonic range uh, are detected mostly by piezoelectric sensors in uh, waveforms uh, and uh, uh, further analyzed. So there are three different levels of uh, assessment by acoustic emission. The first is basic detection, uh, the second is localization and the third is identification. Uh, meaning if uh, acoustic emission is, for example, just um, some friction in the reverse or if it's really uh, correct propagation or correct initiation. Uh, so, uh, now uh, some words about uh, the test. Uh, the FETIC test of integrally stiffened panel was conducted. The panel represents a uh, bottom wing panel of uh, commuter type aircraft. The panel was loaded by flight-by-flight -flight loading sequence, was uh, manufactured from aluminium alloy 7000 series for aerospace industry. Uh, there was uh, initial notch a drilled hole in the middle stringer and the crack propagated from this uh, middle stringer on both sides, uh, on both directions uh, the same. Uh, then the test was terminated after approximately uh, three and a half million cycles uh, to determine residual strength. So, uh, for the purposes of acoustic emission, the data was divided into four uh, stages. The first stage was just uh, beginning propagation from the initial notch into middle stringer. The second stage was during propagation uh, in the first array of skin on the left and on the right side. The third stage was the through propagation in the stringers named B and C, so the first stringers from the middle, and the fourth stage was during propagation in the second array of skin on both sides. Uh, then when the crack reached uh, these stringers, the test was terminated. Uh, so, acoustic emission parameters were evaluated for pairs of sensors in three different arrangements. 
The first arrangement was uh, for vertically placed sensors, the second for sensors across the stringers and uh, the third arrangements for sensors between the stringers, so in uh, one array of the skin. Uh, in order to uh, avoid uh, some environmental or external changes, uh, acoustic emission parameters uh, independent on these external changes needed to be uh, chosen. Uh, as I previously said, uh, elastic waves are detected by piezo piezoelectric centers uh, in waveforms. Uh, basically, the time of uh, signal arrival to different sensors uh, can determine the source of acoustic emission, but because of uh, the stringers uh, on the panel, probably elastic wave propagation was uh, very complex, so uh, time difference of, uh, of arrival, the delta T parameter was used just uh, raw data. The second parameter evaluated was acoustic emission even uh, duration ratio, also for uh, pairs of sensors. So, uh, regarding uh, delta T parameter, uh, results were a little bit uh, surprising uh, because expected value was zero because uh, propagation uh, in the middle of the vertically placed sensors. Uh, probably with increasing uh, crack length there was a uh, significant influence on wave propagation. Uh, probably there were interferences of various reflected and scattered waves and mode conversions. Uh, anyway, uh, the graph shows, uh, for example, for the pair of sensors uh, 3 and 6, uh, that the whole test uh, was um, the same value of delta T and after uh, propagation in the stringer B, uh, the delta T parameter significantly increased. Uh, also for this, uh, for this uh, pair of sensors, uh, delta T parameter increased when the crack propagated in, in the uh, array of skin where the sensors were placed. Uh, results for the second parameter for duration ratio uh, were similar. There was also a uh, significant uh, increase when the crack reached uh, the stringers B and C. Uh, you can see there's a significant increase. Duration ratio was evaluated for two arrangements uh, of sensors. Uh, the first one was for sensors between two stringers, so in one array of the skin. Uh, this represents the black and grey curve. Uh, you can see increase, sudden increase during propagation in that array of skin and then a sudden drop down. Uh, when the crack reached the stringer and started to propagate uh, beyond the stringer. The uh, other curves represent uh, pairs of sensors across the stringers, so there's the whole test uh, the same level, and when the crack reached the stringers B and C, uh, there was a sudden increase. So, uh, Based on the results, it is obvious that uh, crack propagation in the string B and C is a key stage of the whole test. Uh, there's also significant uh, change in crack probe data. Uh, the rate was higher and uh, the same influence on acoustic emission signals on both parameters. Uh, this for delta T and this is for uh, duration ratio. So let me summarize the results again. Um, for all four stages, uh, as I divided uh, in the beginning, uh, during propagation in the middle stringer A, it was just the beginning, there was no influence on uh, chosen acoustic emission parameters. Uh, 
because of the crack initiated from uh, drilled uh, notch and we didn't have any baseline measurements, so this is okay. Then, during the propagation in the first field, uh, first array of skin on both sides, both acoustic emission parameters uh, were influenced by that. Uh, definitely, through propagation in stringers B and C, also a significant influence on both acoustic emission parameters. And uh, finally, during propagation in the second array of skin, uh, influence on delta T is not clear. Probably, if the test would continue through another stringers, it would be uh, obvious. But definitely, duration ratio was also influenced in this stage of propagation. Uh, two recommendations for future experiments. It would be definitely useful use some uh, finite element simulations uh, or other experimental methods. Uh, FS simulations would be useful for verification of these conclusions uh, because uh, we uh, couldn't explain the uh, wave propagation. Uh, then also for optimization of sensor placement and definitely for data for localization purposes. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.